Hey guys, this is Matthew with another Alice 3.1 tutorial. Today we're going to cover uh, sort of an add-on lesson, the last lesson in the Mars series. Um, I'm working on another series and should be starting to post videos on that pretty soon, but today we're covering um, collisions with properties. This is a fairly advanced technique, but if you if you learn the stuff we did in the collisions lesson, then this will just be an add-on thing. And the reason I call it an advanced technique is that you're actually able to do a lot of really, uh, really interesting things with this. And most video games, actually the basis for being able to have video games is this idea that you can tell when two objects collide. Um, now, last time we covered basic collisions, but now we're actually be covering collisions with properties. This isn't actually a lesson on properties. We're only going to introduce them and be able to utilize them to, uh, to make our collisions a lot better. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so this is the, um, the program, the Mars series that we've been working on so far. And if you're not there from last lesson, go to this and under procedures, the blue tab, click on edit for initialize event listeners. And that'll bring up our uh, listeners for this routine. Down at the bottom, we have the collision event listener that we did last time. And let me just really briefly describe what's going on. We have the first array, which holds the Red Rover character. This is our main moving character. And whenever Red Rover runs into anyone else in this other array, the, the boulder, the, any of the boulders, the plateaus, the trees, the mountains, any of those things, when Red Rover runs into them, this line of code is executed. In other words, it moves backwards. Red Rover moves backwards one meter in 0.1 seconds. So that works great if the Red Rover is only moving forwards. Because if he hits an object head on, then he'll move backwards. So I'm moving towards this object, turning towards it, moving, and now I'm going to hit it and I bounce back. So I hit it and I bounce back. So that's great, but the problem is look what happens when I move backwards. Because all this thing says is when you start to make contact, when the Red Rover starts to make contact with another object, move backwards. So up here, as I'm backing up, when I hit start to make contact, when I start to make contact with the rock as I'm backing up, it pushes me farther backwards, actually one meter farther backwards through the rock. So we don't want that. What we want is to be able to know which way the Red Rover turned or move and move or turn in the opposite direction. So what we need is a way to communicate between this event listener and this event listener. Let me uh, scroll up so you can see. In this event listener, this is the, uh, the key press listener, and it, it's, uh, we did this a few lessons ago. That's for whenever you move left, up, right or down move a move or turn in a certain direction either left forward right or backward now what we need is we need a way to say that when i press the up key this collision listener knows that i press the up key and it moves backwards when i hit the down key it knows i hit the down key and it moves forwards so the way we solve this problem is actually with properties so click on your Red Rover character to select it. Notice it got selected right here. Click over to the Properties tab. Notice that the properties are, all, is all, are yellow, procedures are blue, and functions are green. That'll come in handy in a second. And what we're going to do is add a property, which is a way to communicate between these two procedures. So click uh, Add Property. And, we, and it opens up the Add Property dialog box. And we're going to set a couple of fields here. So the first is, is it a variable or a constant? Leave it as a variable because we want it to change. We want this property to change depending on which direction we turn. 
The next is what type of property is it? Is it a decimal number like 0.5 or 1.2, whole number, or any of a bunch of other types of properties? For right now, we're going to go with whole number because it'll be 1 if it turns right, 2 if it turns left, just normal whole numbers. Next, we have to give it a name, and I'm going to call it which turn, as in which way did we just turn? And then the final thing we have to set is the initial value, the initializer. What does it start out as? And I'm just going to say start it out at zero. When, you, when you've set these three uh, fields and left the variable field, uh, left it as a variable, you've done everything you need to do and just click OK. And notice that these, this property and this procedure got added down here underneath the Red Rover's properties. Now with this, uh, with this property, we're going to be able to use that um, within an if statement to, to down here to figure out which way it turned. And this procedure we're going to use to set values. Now if that didn't make sense, what I'm saying is all we're going to do is scroll up to this key press listener and we're going to drag this blue procedure for setting the value of which turn into right above the is key left and I'm gonna set the value to 1 and what this says is every time I hit the left key I want which turn to be set with a value of 1 to be 1 basically now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other three directions and just give it a different value so when I go up I want which turn to have a value of 2 when I turn right I want which turn to have a value of 3 and when I go backwards, I'm going to set it to, you guessed it, now I have to hit whole custom number because the, the 4 isn't, isn't there. You guessed it, 4. So click OK. And now we've set up this uh, procedure, the, the, or this listener, in with everything it needs to know. So whenever we turn a different direction or move a different way, this which turn has a different value. Now what we're going to do is go down here and instead of editing this uh, collision listener which we did last time I'm gonna have you create a copy of it and just keep this one as is just in case we make mistakes we can go back and we don't have to redo these two large th this large array so right click copy it to the clipboard and then on the clipboard drag down this event listener right here and now we've got two identical copies of the same procedure on the bottom one, right click and uncheck the enabled. Notice it's grayed out. That means when you uncheck the is enabled, that means that this won't run. It's still there, so you can turn it back on later if you want to see it, but for right now, it won't run. Next, just right click on this uh, one line that's in the collision listener and delete it because we're going to add our own stuff in here right now. Now, we have to set up an if else statement that's kind of similar to this key press listener where we have four nested if else statements. So first, drag an if else statement into this collision listener and choose either true or false. It doesn't matter, we're going to change it. Once you have this first if else statement, right click on it, scroll down to where you have this rational whole numbers and then scroll over to where you get equals equals. And then just choose uh, equals equals, choose one and one it should and then click on it and it should look like this one equals equals one if you don't have that or if you didn't um, choose the whole decimal number you chose rash or you, you didn't choose whole number you did decimal instead go back and change that to the rational and get the one equals one so this first one is just a placeholder what I'm gonna do is over here this which turn property I'm going to drag it down and drop it over the one to replace the one. And now what this if else statement reads is this. If which turn is equal to one, execute whatever code is right here. Otherwise, go on and execute whatever code is here. So this is kind of our first option. Now I'm going to do the same thing. And actually, actually what, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the turn left and I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard that turn left and then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna drag that uh, turn left down here so 
if you hit the left key, you'll turn left. What we just did is we copied that uh, left command down here. And what I'm actually going to do is have it, instead of turning left, I'm going to have it go right, the opposite direction. And then, uh, yeah, I want it to turn an eighth of a turn. And I'm going to add one more detail. I want the duration to be, choose custom, and do 0.1, or one tenth of a second, because I want it to be fast. Now that you've done this, you can actually just right click on the if else statement, go to copy to clipboard, and then drag that down into the else statement. So we have an identical one. Now change this value to two and copy it, drag it back down, change the value to three and copy it, drag it back down, change the value to custom whole number and four and we're kind of set up. What we need to do now is number three is actually turn right so we want it to go left and then these two um, two and four are going to be moving forward and backward so we have to grab those so right click or scroll up till you find the up copy that to the clipboard move down um, I believe that's number two so delete this guy right here in the uh, which turn equals two and drag that thing from the clipboard down here so move forward we want it to move the opposite direction backward when it gets hit and again we want to change the duration to one tenth of a second and then finally you can just this line of code just copy that to the clipboard the move backward drop it down here and delete the turn that's there delete and uh, we're moving backwards so we want this to be moved forward the opposite direction so this is what your uh, this is what your code should look like for nested if else statements within the collision listener so if you want to pause the video and just make it look like this uh, if it doesn't look like this you probably want to change it to where it looks this way otherwise you might have some problem uh, running your collision statement so just pause it and we'll be back in a sec okay I assume you pause and got it looking like that so now what I'm gonna do is run it and we'll just see if that works so what I'm gonna do is actually check that move backwards so I'm gonna move backwards into this boulder and it actually did work now I'm gonna move backwards so I move backwards and then it moves me forwards which is right that collision is supposed to happen but then did you notice that it still moved me backwards a little bit so it moves backwards then forwards and then keeps going backwards what happened was it takes uh, by default let me close this and scroll up here and show you what's going on by default when I move backwards it takes it I don't have the duration set so if you don't set the duration the duration is by default one second so it takes one second for this guy to move fully backwards but this collision start listener is listening for the first second that you hit an object so what it's saying is the second or the the partial second that you notice you're hitting the object move forward by one meter so what's actually happening is this collision start listener is getting inserted into the middle of this move backwards command so it moves backwards say a quarter of a meter and at that point it hits the rock and then the collision start says oh no I'm hitting the rock moves it forward and then the rest of this move backwards happens so what we need to do it's a really easy fix actually what we need to do is have a pause happen right here so this thing actually moves the full one meter and then it moves forwards or whichever direction so all you gotta do is click on any object, just any object, go over to procedures, scroll down, and there's this second to the bottom is the delay option. So drag that up, drop it above all the if else statements, and set the delay to half a second. So what this is saying is wait half a second before you run this collision start listener. Even when you notice you're running into something, wait a half a second for that uh, move command or the turn command to finish. So now we're going to run it, and let me show you how that works. So we go forward, we go forward, I'm turning, now I'm moving backwards, now I hit it, and I hit it all the way and move forward. 
notice that there's not that lagging where I'm still moving backwards at the end. So I go backwards, hit it, and it's all good. So that is how you do collisions with properties. And with this type of technique, you're able to communicate in between event listeners. And this is a really powerful technique because a lot of times in programming you want some way to be able to communicate between two listeners. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you next time in the Alice Classroom series. Thanks a lot. Bye.